Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. On Sunday, Bulgarians headed to the polls to vote in a general election. And with the ongoing pandemic and the fact you guys seem to love our recent election coverage, we simply couldn't let the opportunity pass to discuss this. So in this video, we'll be taking a deeper look at the Bulgarian election, the challenges and issues surrounding it, and what impact the election will have on Sofia and Europe as a whole. If you like our videos and want to support the channel, you can always check out our merch store, where you can find high quality enamel pin badges with our Countries with Shoes design. We have a pin for every EU country, as well as a bunch of others, which of course means we also have a badge for Bulgaria. The store's linked below, and if you use code BULGARIA, you can get £2 off every pin. That's as many pins as you want for £4 each. Thanks so much for your support. Before we dive into the election and the issues at play, it's best to paint a picture of Bulgaria's economic, social and political standing in the EU. Bulgaria is not a country that dominates the European or international stage by any stretch of the imagination, but some statistics do put it right at the top of the pack. In 2019, 32.5% of Bulgaria's population were marked at risk of poverty or social exclusion, according to Eurostat the highest level in the entirety of the EU, and significantly above the average of 21.1%. The picture doesn't improve when we turn our eyes to the issue of inequality. Again, according to Eurostat, Bulgaria has the highest income inequality in the European Union. Many attribute both issues, poverty and inequality, to economic corruption in the country. Transparency International, which composes the Corruption Perceptions Index, ranked Bulgaria as one of the most corrupt nations in Europe, together with Romania and Hungary. Back in 2019, Transparency International remarks, in Bulgaria, many citizens distrust political institutions and do not feel well represented. With little control over political party funds and few checks and balances, Bulgaria also lacks an independent and transparent media. It is often unclear who owns which media outlets and which political connections they may have. In fact, in 2014, corruption and economic mismanagement became so bad that the European Union deemed it necessary to temporarily freeze billions of euros paid in aid to the country. It's ultimately with this backdrop of systemic and deep-rooted corruption that Bulgarians headed to the polls. As early as July last year, protesters began marching on Bulgaria's streets against the government after security officials raided the offices of the president on July 7th, after he accused the prime minister of having links to oligarchs. A matter of days later on the 11th, the president called both the government and the chief prosecutor, who had approved the seemingly political raid against the president, to resign, stating in a television address that turning the government into a mafia-type structure has pushed freedom-loving Bulgarians of all ages, regardless of political affiliations, to raise demands for the respect of the law. There is only one way out of the current situation, the resignation of the government and prosecutor general. A team of investigative journalists would later reveal that consultants linked to construction companies had been taking cuts of between 30 and 40% of EU-funded projects, or in the region of 200 million euros, a move they say contributed directly to a bus crash on an improperly renovated road in 2018 that sadly killed 16 people. Further investigations would reveal that family members of the agriculture minister received in excess of half a million euros in EU funds. Photographs were also published seemingly showing a pistol and wads of 500 euro notes on Borisov's nightstand, pictures he claims were manipulated. Talking to the FT, the head of Bulgaria's own Supreme Court highlighted the role of corruption in society, stating that the judicial system functions as an umbrella for the government's friends and as a bat for its enemies. They can say where we need to close our eyes and where we need to attack. Protests invariably ballooned, leading to Borisov sacking some of his ministers and pledging constitutional reform to tackle this issue of corruption. The protesters nonetheless wished Borisov to resign, something he's refused to do. But while these protests have continued to this day, the wider issue of corruption seems to have disappeared from the political and, crucially, electoral agenda. 
Daniel Smilov, a political analyst for the Center for Liberal Strategies, commented it's almost unbelievable that high-ranking graft has not been the centerpiece of this election campaign. A sentiment echoed by Peter Bankov of the University of Glasgow, saying we should not overestimate the effects of the protest movement in the polls. The effects of these protests are waning due to a lack of unifying figure or political entity. That being said, three parties campaigned on platforms directly taking on protesters' demands. The centre-right alliance, Democratic Bulgaria, the centre-left coalition, Stand Up, Mafia Out, and the populist party, There Is Such a People, with them making considerable gains. Stand Up managed to get 4.2% of the vote, on course to get 12 seats in the 240-seat National Assembly. Democratic Bulgaria got 10.4% of the vote, or 28 seats. And there is such a people, a brand new party came in third overall, with 15.2%, or 41 seats. All of this means that the anti-Borisov protester bloc of parties are set to control 81 seats, just over a third of the National Assembly. With such a grip on the National Assembly, and with at least a third of seats immediately off the coalition negotiating table, Borisov is in a difficult position. His populist party, Citizens for European Development in Bulgaria, only managed to get 25.7% of the vote, down significantly from 2017 when it got 32.7% all in all giving Borisov just 70 seats in the assembly, 51 short of a majority. Forming a coalition with the Movement for Rights and Freedoms would net Borisov an additional 30 seats, but he'd still remain 21 seats short of an outright majority. The election results will invariably have political consequences beyond just Bulgaria's borders though. Bulgaria vetoed the opening up of accession negotiations for North Macedonia to join the EU, with them stating that until North Macedonia stamps out anti-Bulgarian rhetoric, they will continue to veto. Some see this position as conditional, at least in part, on the role of the anti-Macedonian VMRO party, who gathered about 4% of the vote or 11 seats in the National Assembly. But given the tight political landscape for Borisov, we may see the VMRO form part of the wider government coalition, consisting of GERB, DPS and VMRO. Therefore, consolidating this anti-Macedonian sentiment and continuing the Bulgarian veto against the ascension process. However, even with this potential coalition, Borisov would remain 10 seats short of an overall majority, with little to no remaining avenues for coalitions with other parties. The Socialist Coalition for Bulgaria managed to get 17.6% of the vote and 48 seats. Those 48 seats, added to the anti-Borisov protest bloc we mentioned earlier, would pass the magic 121 mark for netting the coalition with 129 seats. Borisov, nonetheless, will, as the leader of the largest party, have the first crack at forming a government, and it's unlikely he'll want to let go of the reins of power easily. Some are already calling this the end of Borisov's tenure as Prime Minister though, with Daniel Smilov remarking that the initial results suggest that Borisov has lost the election. While Borisov might try his best, it seems unlikely that he'll be able to form a government and return as a Prime Minister. But what do you think? Is this the end of the road for Borisov, or the start of a new future for Bulgaria? Or are the issues more endemic than just one man and his party? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.